Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be embarking on a crouching adventure. I'm going to be implementing crouching in the first person template. I did this video before, but I uh, neglected or I didn't see an issue that can occur when you do that. So I'm going to be uh, fixing that and kind of doing it again, start to finish, kind of uh, explaining what I'm doing as I go, debugging and uh, just having fun. And uh, bear in mind, I am a hobbyist and uh, I have a certain style of explaining things. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So uh, first let's implement the crouching functionality, as they say. Uh, we're gonna go into the first person BP in the content folder, open up blueprints, go into the first person character, and uh, this is the event graph. We'll go into a blank space, as they say. And I want, uh, let's say, left Kataril to control my crouching. So when I press it, I'll crouch. When I release it, I will not crouch. Uh, or you can toggle if you want, but let's just keep it, uh, keep it this way. So how crouching works, as far as I know, is it will take a, well, crouching is dictated by the capsule component. So we'll just click on that, which is the thing that surrounds the player that everything's kind of connected to. I will drop that in there as a reference, and then I will drag a pin off of that and then set half height, right? So this is the, uh, the, the half height of the capsule. So how capsules work is uh, they have half height, which is interesting. Uh, half height is uh, from the center position, um, from the center position to the top or the bottom, that's the length of it. So basically your capsule height will be this number doubled. So 96, so that's almost a, a meter. So our character is like two meters tall. He's a pretty tall, pretty tall guy. So I want, uh, I want this I want to commit this to uh, memory. I could have this as a as a variable, but I'll just set it to here. So when we release, I want to make it go back to uh, 96 as our half height. So I'll just do that. Boom. And then uh, I'll get a uh, another. I'll just copy this. Control C, and then copy that over. So when I press it, I want to be uh, let's say 40. So we're really crouching. We're, the half height is uh, 40 centimeters off the ground. So when I press control, I will crouch. And that's basic a basic crouch going on, which is fun. I can have that set to a, a timeline if I wish. Um, but yeah, let's just, uh, let's get there when we get there. Let's just kind of debug this issue that we're about to run into. So I will uh, set my first person character there, save, first person example map. I'll go over here and I want a basic geometry. Give me, give me a plane. And I'll make that big, set that up like that. Wait, is that, no, that's not going to work. I'll just use uh, the geometry. Uh, there we go. Get a box. I like boxes. And then I will go and I will set the Z like so. And uh, make it long and wide or whatever. And this is just something that we can crouch under. So there's this. We're colliding into it that guy camera is clipping through it but what we can do is um let's just skip a couple steps and then move this up let's get the uh, basic idea we can play around where the camera rests and so yeah i'm uh, I'm, I'm crouching underneath it but if i release control i will kind of get stuck and that's not good. My capsule will snap open and uh, it'll kind of hit this guy. And you can do, you can fix this in a moment. I can't move. I can't, that's not good. I hit control again, I can move again. But if I release control, I kind of get stuck. That's not good. So I need to figure out a way so that if the player 
is underneath there and, and the player is crouched, the player will not be able to uncrouch. It'll have to wait until it leaves that area. So I'll go to basic and I'll go to box trigger. And then this is a, uh, it's a, a, a trigger box of sorts. I will make this to the appropriate size. So let's just pretend this is a, uh, a uh, like a ventilation shaft or something. And uh, let's, let's get it the right size. Yeah, we're getting there. I might need to move that over a bit more. Debug early, debug often. So there's a trigger box underneath there, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, there, there's that, uh, there's that trigger box. So when I go into that trigger box, I want some information to be um, sent to the player to be like, nope, you can't. You can't uncrouch yet. It's not going to happen. So let's uh, select that. And the cool thing about this is I will have this uh, visible, no, hidden, sorry. Actor hidden in game, not hidden in game. I don't want it hidden in game uh, because I want this to be visible for uh, debugging purposes. I like all my trigger boxes to be visible. It's very important to me. It's more important than Christmas. So let's have a, uh, let's select the trigger box and then let's convert this to a blueprint. So we'll go blueprint, add script, trigger box, uh, crouch underscore BP, right? So we know what it is. So it's a trigger box. It's related to crouch and uh, that's very important. Oops. Yeah, let's go create that, and then there it is. So let's let's get some stuff to uh, let's test some stuff out. Okay, so when the player enters it, that is an overlap event. So it's already here. Actor event begin overlap, and uh, I want to just see how that works. So print string, right? So print string will basically make something show up. So overlap, it'll make something show up as text on the screen. And uh, I like to kind of, as I build something, I like to test it because I don't want to like come up with something and build it and then like it doesn't work and I don't know why it doesn't work. I don't know where the, fail, the failure point is. So that's what I do. I test like every time I add a little uh, section to the uh, blueprints, I will test it and be like, okay, that worked. All right, I can move on. Just to, just so I don't pull out my uh, non-existent hair. Okay, so uh, end overlap. So we end overlap. I want it to uh, say something. So this is, this is basically it. So I'll, pr sorry, print string there, and then I'll go not overlap just to just to test it out and uh, this is you know beginner intermediate kind of thing so here is our trigger volume i'll crouch down and then yay overlap not overlap overlap not overlap overlap not overlap perfect for uh debugging i will leave those in uh for fun all right so actor and overlap so i want to send information to whatever is overlapping uh, the character. And in that case, it is the uh, third, no, sorry, first person character. So I'm gonna drag off this other actor. So when you overlap, it'll be like, hey, what, what overlapped? And we'll get a reference to that. It's very important. So overlap, uh, first person characters right up there cast a first person character boom we automatically have our reference plugged in and then uh, yeah we can then cast to our other blueprint and this took me a while to kind of wrap my head around and I still don't have it probably but uh, yeah when we overlap we will send information to the first person character so 
What does that mean? Well, let's uh, get a, a variable going on. Variables are super useful. Variables are invited to Thanksgiving. So let's uh, just add a new variable right here in the first person character. Uh, and we'll call this is. And here's what I do because I'm a freaking noob and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, like all my variables and things, I always capitalize for some reason. Just so I'm like, hey, that's in all caps. I made that. So just whatever. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll just do it just so we know. So is uh, um, overlap is overlapping crouch trigger, right? So this is in the first person character. Okay. Is overlapping uh, crouch trigger. Cool. So I want this variable to be controlled by the trigger box. So we shall, uh, as first person care, oh, I might wanna make sure you compile and save so that uh, these variables are visible. So we go over here and then as first person character, we'll drag off that. I'll go uh, is crouch, right? So those are the, the, the two variables. So this is a variable, it's whatever, but this is the one that I made. And uh, so I'll go, I want to set. Set is overlapping. So when I'm overlapping, I want this to be set to true. And then boom, boom. And then for the sake of uh, simplicity, I'll just drag that over like so. And then I'll plug that in. Well, I don't even need to really plug that in because once I overlap, in theory, I'll get the reference to it. So I will drag that in to, oh, no, sorry. Drag that into the target. So it's the same target that was set there and then move that over and then I'll uh, take that off. So I need to monitor this variable in my first person character now and uh, this is basically all I need in there so uh, basically what's happening is when you uh, begin event overlap it'll get whatever overlapped uh, assuming it's the first person character who else would it be um, it will get a, a reference to that plug that into there and then as a first person character it will set a variable that we set up in that other blueprint is overlapping crouch trigger it's like, are we inside that crouch trigger? It'll say yes. When we leave, it will say no. And that's basically it. So here's something that I like to do. Uh, I reserve the P key for, uh, the P key I reserve for uh, print string. So I'll do that. When I press it, I want to print string. And then I will drag this boolean over here. Nope. I have to drag it in. Oops. Sorry. Drag it in. I will say get. I want to get that variable that uh, the uh, trigger box is essentially ver uh, changing for me. So I'll hit play and I'll hit P and uh, false. I'm hitting P. It's saying false. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm not in the trigger. When I go in here and then I press P, true, I'm in the trigger box. So with all that information, when, okay, with all that, okay, I don't want to confuse anyone. So the box trigger is setting this. This is a true or false. So I will get this. And since it's a true or false, I will set up a branch like so, boom. And I will disconnect this guy. So when I press the left control key, I will set the capsule height to 40. I am essentially crouched. When I release it, I want to check if I am in that box trigger or not. If I am not in that box trigger, right, I will uncrouch and stand back up. If I am in that box trigger, I will wait a tiny bit and then check again. Are you still in that box trigger? If I am, 
I will check again, and then I will keep on checking until I am not, and then I will uncrouch. Pretty simple. How you do that? I do this a lot, and uh, I go take off the true and hit delay, right? And this is the amount of time you will wait. So we'll go 0.4 seconds. You don't want to do this every tick because holy crap, that's like the first thing they teach you in Unreal Engine University. Don't use tick if you can help it. Uh, tick should be reserved for like graphical stuff or if you absolutely must use tick, don't even use it. <laughs> so when true, hit complete, go back over to the beginning, bam. When I discovered this, I'm like, holy crap, this is awesome. Coding is cool. And then I'm just double clicking to create reroute nodes. And uh, so I hit control anywhere in the world and uh, it will crouch me no problem. When I release it, right, it will check if I'm in that trigger. If I am in that trigger, it will say true, and then it'll go to this delay node, wait, um, you know, this set amount of time, like 400 milliseconds or something, like that. a long time in computer world, uh, 0.4 seconds. When that's completed, it'll fire again into the branch, and it'll check again. It'll keep on checking until it says, you are no longer in the trigger box. And when I'm no longer in the trigger box, it'll hit false, and I'll set my capsule height to what it was, and I will compile and then save and then test it out. So I'll go, I'm crouching, right, and I kind of jumped, which is weird. I should attach that to the timeline. So yeah, let's uh, crouch. And now I'm overlapped, and I let go of the the control button, and I'm not stuck, and I'm continuing. I'm in my ventilation shaft. I'm testing this out, crawling along, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm not stuck anymore, and still having it released. I will move out, and then eventually it'll stand me back up automatically. Yay! Right, and then we'll go over here, things like that really awesome and uh, that's just you know kind of those uh, problem solving um, things that you'll run into really easy to do and uh, you know it's doing a it's doing a thing where I'm overlapping before I'm even going in there so you know what I can do is I can kind of make this smaller and kind of test and I know Unreal Engine if if I'm over here and I'm on it'll It'll just pop me back out. That's kind of what it does. So yeah, you just test, test and test. See, I'm going up against here. I'm not triggering any overlapping events. Crouch, go forward, overlap, right? The debugging. And I can move around and then I will slowly scooch out. I'm not overlapping and then I stood up. Um, there's a lot of things you can play around with. You can adjust the uh, capsule height via a timeline right and it'd be a good idea to uh you know um do that you know what i'll do that i will i will do that how about that that's good okay so uh i will double, double click those reroute nodes hit that hit that and i'm going to create a timeline right click Timeline. Add a timeline. Timelines are freaking oops, freaking cool. So this needs to be done in a different way. We're still going to keep the majority of this, but this is this is the the beauty of uh, blueprints. Once you kind of get used to them, you can change things as uh, as you want here. So we don't need. We only need one of these guys. And let's see. Okay, so when I press left control, I want to play this timeline. In this timeline, I want to go from a float of uh, 96 to 40. So I'll double click, create a new float track, and I will select the time it takes. It takes about a, I guess, a second for the average human being to, to uh, crouch. Hit uh, hold shift and then click. Hold shift and then click, and then I'll I will uh, make sure these are both set to uh, 
that. So usually I have a pad and pen in front of me. I do not I have a microphone instead. I'm going to go from 96 to 40. Where am I? Oh yeah, so the timeline's over here. Let's go 96, right? And then this one. Oh no, that was time. Oops. Okay, that doesn't matter. So I'll just do that. So value, I would be 96, boom. And then the time would be zero. So we'd start there. And then this one would be 40. Okay, so and then I'll hit this guy to fit everything um, vertically. And then I'll just get rid of that. Hit that horizontal. Okay, so that's our, our timeline. I'll hit compile. Go back into the event graph. Okay, so this essentially this node will update and uh, set the capsule height um, every every frame it will update depending on what's going on and this might be a little confusing it confused me as well but uh, we'll kind of get through it and I'm gonna make sure I kind of explain it properly so when you update it'll update it every frame da 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 and uh, this flow track that we made in the timeline right this would be a new track can I rename this yes I can um, uh, player height yeah I'll do that compile save go to the event graph and then I will set the player height here just to this one and that will control that value right so when I hit when I uh, compile and I hit play and I hit control it will gently uh, move that down and we can adjust the speed of that uh, there's nothing for me to, uh, to stand back up on so when I go over here I press release I'll hit reverse for those following along hit play again and uh, yeah let's uh, crouch crouching and then when I release I uncrouch and I can run around go under here crouch and then uncrouch and then ah, I'll get stuck it'll do the same thing so we will uh, get rid of uh, this because we only need one of them now. And we're going to implement the uh, is uh, overlapping crouch trigger, oops, Boolean, the true or false branch before we reverse. It's super, oops, I spoke too soon. It's super duper easy. So when that's completed, Right, so you can just, uh, I'll just move this out of the way. I will all click that. All right, so when I release, I will plug into this branch and it'll check, hey dude, are you still under that thing? And we've already, you know, explained this. When we're not under, it will then and only then reverse the timeline. Timeline is basically just an animation. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do. I'm going to set this to something 0.5. Nope, not 5. 0.5 in terms of time. And the length will be uh, 0.5 as well. Right? And uh, we don't, things don't really crouch linearly. So I'll select this first one and then go uh, auto interpolation. And it just gives it a nice little curve and you can play around with it. Um, but that's a topic for a different video. So let's try it out. Oh, yeah. And we are crouching smooth crouching go over here or overlap and we're crouching still and then we will move out and then we uncrouch yay it's super fun and uh rewarding and um you know it would take a little bit more time to get really finicky with this like say you know i i, I imagine like 007 like a like a, a ventilation shaft and then you can like go in here or you can crouch you can uh, toggle crouch you hit uh, control once and then you'll crouch you hit it again you'll crawl or something like that. or you press c and then you get like really low and then you move slower things like that all sorts of stuff you can do but uh yeah this is a basic uh kind of uh workflow of um getting things done and uh moving the code around and uh making it uh work so just I guess as a refresher 
so this is the uh, the trigger box looks like so when something overlaps it it will print a string saying overlap this is for debugging purposes only the other actor we know is the first person character so that'll be the object that we cast to that's the reference boom and then as first person character it will adjust a variable that we set up in there saying is overlapping crash trigger true or is it false and then we end overlap it will because it already has that reference it will set it to not crouched and we uh, we did this and we can go back and print this the the string again with p as far as i know nope i got rid of that never mind um but yeah let's just it works because you know we we tested it out so when you crouch it will play a timeline and then set uh, the capsule half height to a value that we have in here, which we can use variables, but whatever, we're not that fancy. And then when you uncrouch, it will check, are you in that crouch trigger still? If you are, it will select true, go to uh, the delay, wait an unspecified amount of time. Um, you know, you, you wanna have this, not every frame, uh, but you know to kind of lighten the load you know 0.4 or even like 0.2 um certain elements you just see like what's the most you can get away with and if you practice that your 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 coding is more like efficient and you don't have a lot of overhead anyway once that's completed it will go back to the branch again it'll go back to it again automatic autom automatically geez i keep on saying that as a joke and it's just something that i say automatically you know it just goes in a loop over and over and over again constantly checking until uh, you're no longer in it it's false and only then it reverses uh, the uh, player height which is your crouch and you know what I mean like you can you can go super cool you can adjust the capsule height and move the camera down relatively you can get really fancy with it um, and uh, yeah that's uh, basically all that so hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you learned stuff take care and have a good one Goodbye. Like and subscribe.